it's very exciting, exciting job. Um, as exciting as uh, working for Dropbox <laughs> and starting up a new company or taking a PhD course in Berkeley, things like that. By the way, uh, the Google Developer Relations team is hiring, so please check our recruiting page if you're interested. Uh, before joining Google, I was a Google App Engine fanboy, and I'm still a big fan of it. For those who are not familiar with App Engine, anybody here? Everybody is familiar with App Engine? No? Okay. App Engine. Uh, okay. App Engine is an auto scaling web app hosting platform provided by Google. And so you can, so you can only write your code, then Google will operate your web app in Google Data Center. And I'm also a big fan of Stevie Wonder, as you can see it from the URL in the slide and my middle name. <laughs> it's not a legal name. But my current personal interest is computer security. Uh, although I'm still a novice learner, uh, especially a newly found attack called Breach, uh, attack against HTTPS called Breach, has really surprised me a lot in the sense that there is still such a simple attack against a uh, widely used protocol like HTTPS. So if you're also interested in this topic, let's have a chat later today. Okay. In this session, I'll talk a bit about my current project, a VM-based backend, virtual machine-based backend, which was initially started by Kevin Gibbs and Guido Van Rossum. Kevin is the founder of App Engine, and Guido is the founder of Python. It seems like they love to start things. And unfortunately, both of them left Google a while ago. Dropbox stole him. <laughs> and now our growing and dedicated team inherits their work. And VM-based backends is currently in the trusted test phase of the life cycle of App Engine features which means you need to apply to the trusted tester program and get your application whitelisted in order to start using it. Uh, this is basically a new App Engine runtime environment uh, running on Google Compute Engine. So how many of you guys uh, attend Google Compute Engine session yesterday? Yeah. Hmm. Hi. And I believe that this new feature will unleash the, the App Engine Python completely. So what does it mean? Uh, VM-based backends allow you to run your App Engine instances on Google Compute Engine. We are trying to build a new type of platform blessed with both the maintenance-free nature of the fully managed PaaS environment and flexibility of the IRC environment. The runtime environment within the compute VMs is totally free from the traditional various restrictions of App Engine. While you can still use all of the App Engine APIs and services out of the box. Sorry. I should do something about it. Uh, Security, maybe? <laughs> All right. <laughs> should have, should have changed to the shorter password. 
sorry. Okay. Looks fine. And uh, where was I? Yeah. So, Apple's in instances on VM, computing VMs, it's totally from, free from the restrictions. I said that, yeah. And let me tell you what you can do with the VM based backends briefly. Uh, with the VM based backends, you can run any code within App Engine instances since there is no sand sandbox restriction anymore. Uh, App Engine needs to have a rather strong sandbox. I'll talk, you, talk to you later. And uh, you, can, um, you can use higher memory and a more powerful CPU chosen from the Compute Engine instance lineups. And you can also use the full network stack, including running TCP servers, other than normal uh, HTTP request. HTTP uh, request. And in other words, you can use SciPy or OpenCV or any other Python modules, and you can also run Redis that everyone loves as an external process. And you can also run WebSocket server. And the VM based backends allow you to do all of them within your App Engine applications. So isn't it, isn't it lovely? Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> so I, I think I heard these phrases somewhere before. Isn't, isn't it lovely? No, different melody. <laughs> uh, does any, anybody mind if I sing here? OK. <laughs> Okay. Uh, here is my today's agenda. <laughs> Too long instructions, sorry about that. First, I will try to explain uh, some elements relevant to my talk, then walk through a brief history of Google App Engine Python environment and show how we've been improving it. Then I'll talk about the main topic, VM-based backends, and why we needed to uh, create it. Some users examples and demos. And I, I hope we can have some Q&A at the, the end of the session, if time allows. Uh, this is a beautiful picture of uh, Google's data center. Google has been running some of the world's largest distributed systems with unique and strangest requirements. And for the past 14 years, Google has been building uh, out the world's fastest, most powerful, highest quality cloud infrastructure on the planet. And what is Google Compute Engine? As I said before, it's a VM in the Google Data Center. And you can use virtual machines in Google's data center. And all the reason to Google Compute Engine as disk storage options is encrypted using the AES 128-bit CBC mode. And you can connect with the efficient Google network. And you can only pay for what you use with the per minute billing, which is great. And you can create up to 10 terabytes of disk volumes that offer strong and predictable read and write performance. And what, what is Google App Engine? Uh, as I said before, you just deploy your application to Google's infrastructure. And we wear the pages, actually. And App Engine automatically takes care of provisioning and balancing requests across instances and data centers. So you can focus on writing your applications. One of the greatest features of App Engine is the 
automatic scaling. All you have to do is to write your application code and well, we'll do the rest. No matter how many users you have or how much data your application stores, App Engine uh, can scale to meet your needs. And you will receive generous free quota refilled every day so that in most cases you can go for free during development or prototyping phase. And even after your app goes into production, you will only pay for what you use beyond the free quarter. And uh, here is a rough figure that describes how App Engine works. On deployment, the code is deployed to the app server. The static files go to the static servers. An app, en app Engine front-end servers handle the traffic directly and route the request to the appropriate servers. An app, app master on the top will spin up new app servers when needed. And your code can use the App Engine's scalable and highly available APIs out of the box, which are very useful for building web applications. And infrastructure hassles like hardware failures and traffic spikes, scaling issues, uh, software patches and up upgrades, etc., are all handled Google, handled by Google. In other words, using App Engine is like hiring Google engineers as your infrastructure staff. And here is a partial list of useful APIs. Memcache is handy for caching values. Uh, data store is highly scalable persistent sto storage. And task queue is very handy for executing heavy tasks asynchronously. And these APIs are already there in the cloud and ready to use without any configurations. Okay, that's the overview. And uh, let's look at the history of App Engine, evaluating it as a Python runtime environment. Uh, some of you may still remember, Google released the first version of Google App Engine in April uh, 2008. And it was uh, the first Python environment that has a real auto-scaling auto feature, as far as I know. And that was a very drastic change, and I completely fell in love with it. But, of course, there are some trade-offs. I think these are good trade-offs in a sense that these restrictions allow Google to run the service securely and in a portable manner. By portable, I mean, even if one of the data centers stops operating, we can rapidly move your application to another data center. Google App Engine is a shared environment, and we need to isolate one up to another, so we need to have a sandbox environment with rather strong security restrictions, like no uh, arbitrary C modules or no bytecode manipulation, or things like that. And certainly, the, the initial version of App Engine was still a perfect fit for certain types of web, web requests uh, like a top page for a, or for a popular web app website or endpoints for mobile apps in fashion and so forth and so on. We, we, however, also know that there are some use cases that don't fit in this programming model. For example, a long-running billing pipeline or shared memory states of massive online games are a little bit difficult to implement on the traditional App Engine. So the typical weak points of the initial version of App Engine are uh, somewhat difficult to implement long-running tasks on App Engine. And I don't know why. <laughs> OK, 
I keep touching. <laughs> huh? Huh? And uh, if you are using third party modules which are not supported by App Engine, it's very hard to port your application. And the runtime has limited memory and CPU so that you often need to uh, divide a big workload into small chunks. And sometimes that is a difficult or cumbersome task. And App Engine doesn't allow you to use arbitrary network connections. So only allow outbound uh, URL fetch or mail or GTalk. And that said, we've been putting lots of efforts on removing those restrictions and weaknesses. So a good example of this is that uh, we released App Engine backends in the year of 2011 and removed some of the restrictions. With App Engine backends, there is no request deadline. And you can also use the background threads. App Engine backends allow you to run your long running business logic or long lived memory state indefinitely. Okay, that's great. The first problem solved. Unfortunately, there, that's not enough for everyone. Since App Engine backends are built on top of the same technology as the normal App Engine, we sometimes need to shut down our instances and spin up a new one somewhere else for various reasons. And it's almost impossible to predict when it happens. The lack of SLA for instance lifetime forces developers to implement an, an appropriate shutdown hook, which sometimes could be a challenging task. Uh, this issue is one of the reasons that we are building the VMBest backends, which is basically a new generation of our App Engine backends. So here is another big improvement uh, in the same year. We released Python 2.7 support in October 2011, Python 2.7 runtime is multi-threaded, so one single instance can handle multiple requests. The other big change was that we added several third-party modules pre-compiled and deployed in the cloud environment, including Python Imaging Library, Matplotlib, NumPy, and so forth and so on. Okay, now you can use various third-party modules with, app, with an App Engine. Problem solved. No, not entirely. There are still a bunch of unsupported Python C modules out there. For example, uh, either of SciPy or OpenCV uh, is not supported by App Engine yet. And maintaining all of the third-party modules for App Engine is almost impossible for, for us. So this is the second reason that we are building VM-based backends, because it allows you to use any Python modules within your App Engine applications. So another improvement is that we started offering various types of instance classes, which allow you to use uh, instances with more memory, or more, and more powerful CPU. And however, it's still limited to one gigabyte and 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, what if I could use Compute Engine instance instead? You can use memory up to 52 gigabytes and up to eight core CPUs, where one CPU core is equivalent to 2.75 Google Compute Engine units where one Google Compute Engine unit is about as performant as 1.2 gigahertz Opteron. Is that right, Brian? <laughs> and it's not an easy comparison, but let me just say that uh, they are way more powerful than App Engine instances. Uh, speaking of CPU, uh, Probably B8, App Engine's B8 is about equivalent as 
one CPU core? I don't know. Sorry. But way more powerful. And we also improved the network capability. Uh, the socket API is still in the previous state, but now you can e implement Redis, IMAP, or DNS client on App Engine. And all right, do you think the network restriction App, en App Engine is completely gone? No. So what is left? Yeah, yeah. You cannot listen. Right. Uh, still, you cannot listen on arbitrary network ports within App Engine, App Engine application. For example, you cannot implement a WebSocket server yet or any other type of servers. And as you can see, this is another reason that we are building VM-based backends, which come to rescue. And as you can see from the history, our motivations on the VM-based backends is that basically we want to provide these new goodies to App Engine applications. And longer processes, we only restart your VMs once per week. And you can leverage almost all of the instance lineups of Google Compute Engine. And you should be able to use any Python modules. And you can spawn external processes. And you can even listen on arbitrary network ports. So you can do all of them with the VM-based backend. As I said before, the VM-based backend is a new technology blessed from both IOS and PaaS. What kind of benefits you will get from both sides? From Compute Engine side, you will be free from App Engine Sandbox. You will get beefy VMs and threads and sub-processes, software installation with apt-get, full network connectivity, and SLA for instance lifetime. From App Engine side, you'll get App Engine's low, App Engine's low balancing servers and supercharged APIs out of the box. The VMs always live very close to the App Engine systems for ma minimizing the latency. You'll get automatic health checking and automatic software updates. And you can still use App Engine Admin Console for managing your app. But to be fair, I should mention this. Unfortunately, auto-scaling auto feature provided by App Engine is something you will miss if you use VM-based backends, which is why we call this feature as backends. That said, this is because our bar for calling something as auto-scaling is very high, where we need to spin up a new instance in seconds, not in minutes. We, we don't think it is a big problem, because uh, you can still place the traditional App Engine front-end servers to handle the traffic directly. And also, and, and probably with, our, with the caching layer, and also you can still build your own auto-scaling capability by calling modules API and spawning a new spawning new VM instances. OK. Here's a user's example. Uh, here's an example configuration file for VM-based application, which is really simple. Uh, lines in bold are only configurations that you need to add to, ex to existing app.yaml config file in order to deploy your App Engine application uh, to the VM-based backends. And you can just run app, appcfg.py as always. Then app, app Engine will automatically spin up your VMs for you. And optionally, uh, you can specify apt packages you want to install on the VMs. Um, white space delimiter. And let me explain how it works briefly. So when you deploy a VM-based application to App Engine, 
the deployment goes as follows. App Engine updates meta information within App Engine system in the left and spins up Computer Engine instances with some metadata on the right and deploys the runtime and application code to the Computer Engine instances. And within the instance, a multi-threaded web server will run your App Engine application. Then, App Engine system start, start health checking. If the check succeeds, App Engine will notify the developer that the deployment succeeded. When an HTTP request comes to the VM-based application, App Engine proxies the request to the, uh, the web server running on the computer VM. The web server's uh, destination is stored in the metadata in App Engine system. And when your application invokes one of the App Engine API, uh, API calls, the service module on the VM proxy the API request back to App Engine. The destination information is stored in the Computer Engine metadata. And the, then App Engine ex, ex, executes the API on VM's behalf and returns an API response to the VM. The response from your application goes to App, App Engine and then to the users. Okay, let's look at some sample applications on VM-based backends. The first one is a very basic uh, guestbook application with SQLite and local file as a data storage. So here's a change for VM-based backends, as I said before. Here's the instances. I need two, inst two VM instances. And machine type is N1 standard one. And that's it. So let's deploy the application. To the cloud. Usually, the deployment will take uh, about two minutes or so. And your VMs will appear on their console. But while watching the console, uh, let's look at the, uh, the application code. First, I need uh, just importing SQLite 3, which is not permitted to use uh, within the traditional app engine. And I can use the local file system. Here, I'm using temp directory. But uh, please note that every file on the local file system will, will be gone when the VM restarts. So it's kind of an anti-pattern. This guestbook is not a production use, but people think this as a, just a sample. And let's re re reload the Cloud Console. And you can see the SQLite guestbook instance, uh, two, two instances here. And, okay, update finished. You can see the instance information on the App Engine Admin Console, uh, like this. Oh, yeah with the health check result. And let's, let's access to the, oh, where is there? Okay. This, 
This is the, the, the sample app running. So that this data is stored on their local file on the Compute Engine VMs. Okay, there is nothing notable other than that you, uh, you can use the SQLite module and the local file system in this application. But it's a little bit surprising for the, the existing App Engine users, right? And this application is not very practically useful. So let's look at more useful an application with the SciPy module for simulating a zombie apocalypse. It is very important, right? <laughs> and useful. And let's look at the app. Here. First, this is our application configuration. And here's an app to get installed. Specifying, I need Python NumPy, Python SciPy, and Python Matplotlib. I'm using the plotting the graph uh, for uh, using the Matplotlib for plotting. And the zombie module, I'm in, uh, importing OD int. This is an od ordinary different di differential equation. <laughs> and here's a class for solving the uh, algebra. And here's a main pi. So one thing is, one thing to note is, uh, okay, I'm using multiprocessing for avoiding multi-thread problem with matplotlib. So, so, because as far as I know, matplotlib doesn't work well uh, within a multi-threaded multi environment. So it, it, it is a very easy way to avoid that. But this is another surprising for you. And uh, here's a working application. Actually, this is uh, uh, very similar to the sample code, which is listed on SciPy uh, cookbook, where but I added this control panel so when the initial population grows, the apocalypse will come earlier. And even if we have one babies a day, it doesn't help much. <laughs> it's very useful. But I don't think there is something we can do. <laughs> But anyway, so this is a side by application. And the thir third, third one is, uh, sorry, the third one is, ah, uh, so, WebSocket chat. But as you can see, no, 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 this is not a WebSocket chat. App Engine, WebSocket Chat, Java. <laughs> As you can see, this is Java. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, why this is written in Java? Um, it's, kinda, it's kind of my job duty to provide both Python and Java sample. Um, by the way, I like Java 2, actually. And server, chat socket server, Java. Ah. <laughs> so this is, there is a start uh, method 
which is called by uh, uh, called upon VM VM starts. And uh, this is a this uses chat socket server library and actually listening on the, uh, the, the network port on the VM. And at the same time, I'm resist registering this uh, WebSocket server uh, in the, the App Engine data store here. Uh, this is this is using uh, object objectify, but underlining uh, it stores the data into the the app engine data store, so that you can uh, use both of uh, WebSocket network connection and uh, data store APIs simultaneously, and. This is working here. If someone, if anyone wants to access, is there a short link? T5 VQ GV. Okay. And you need to enter first. So all of the messages are gone, go through, are gone through, uh, go, go th all of the messages go through WebSocket connection between the browser and the, the actual VM directly. And this application is running on several VMs, actually. So I need to propagate the message um, message in one server to another. So it, it is done by WebSocket connection as well. Anonymous. Hello. All right. Thank you for using. Uh, that's my demo today, for today. And in the slide, I have some links to the my GitHub repository. So please check that if you're interested in. And I think VM-based backends will entirely change the future of App Engine. In order to make it a really awesome feature, we need your feedback. Um, if you're interested in trying this feature out, please consider applying to the Trusted Tester program. And my talk is almost finishing. As a recap, please just remember this. So App Engine Python is going to be unleashed, which means that in the near future, you will be able to use any Python modules, including SciPy and OpenCV. You will be able to run Redis or to use web sockets uh, within your App Engine application. And as, as you can see, we're trying to remove almost all of the restrictions that the traditional App Engine runtime has, while we still provide all of the App Engine services and APIs. Also, we will ensure the minimum latency between App Engine system and your VMs so that the performance overhead should be almost always minimum. I think this is one of the greatest uh, future, future visions of web application platform where you can benefit from the both sides. We will definitely keep working hard to make this feature into the previous state which means everyone can use it. So please stay tuned. Huh? One more thing. I wanted to do this. <laughs> we have Startup Park.
for a Google Cloud Platform, which means you can get $2,000 credit, $1,000 for Computer Engine, and another thousand for App Engine. So please uh, go to the URL and apply now. So that's the end of my session. Here's, a, here's also the startup park inf information. So. so if you have any questions. Do we have any questions? OK, I'll go with you first. So I, I, must, I might admit you have said, but to do all HTTP requests to the service goes to VM backend, or can I configure the request accept the ordinary instance and then explicitly call the backend, uh, VM backend to get the response? Uh, the HTTP request will first go to the app engine, engine and then go to proxies, go to proxy, proxy and go to uh, VM. Okay, so that front end is just proxying. I cannot right. control. Right, right, right. But you can use modules to handle uh, so certain type of request uh, should be handled by the traditional app engine front end, but uh, other URLs should go to VM based backends. Oh, okay, so that you can, you can define their uh, configuration. So I can configure that like that. Current back end front end thing. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, this is really interesting. We we actually evaluated using Google App Engine mm -hmm. about two years ago, and because of the restrictions, it there was no way we could use it. And um, th this definitely looks like it's worth reevaluating at, at at this point. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you have um, Something like they have the for Python the the wall of shame or the wall of superpowers or whatever they're they're calling it now. Is there a list of which libraries will run on there and which libraries will not run on there? Oh, um, for for VM based backends, you mm -hmm. should be able to run all of the third party modules. All of them. So no blacklist. Okay, yeah. and is. Uh, Python 3 supported yet, or is that in the Not future? yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, we have a plan, but I have no, uh, I have anything to announce today. Uh, okay, I understand. Okay, thank, thank you. Oh, oh, one thing to add. You can spawn an external process running Python 3. That's doable. Okay, that's a good question. So, is a hidden character? So you had a source for app packages earlier. Is there any way to get your own, like either D package or app source in there? Like, yeah. Say you're building a custom package with custom binaries. Or we like discussed that. that heavily, but uh, at this point. You only use Debian's app to repository with security update. Hi. Um, it seems that uh, the programming option for uh, uh, backend only supports uh, app to get, but is it possible to specify some uh, packages? It is. Um, uh, it is only on uh, PyPI. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you can, yeah, you can. Um, when the VM starts, a special type of request goes go to a specific URL, so that your app can handle that request. So it's very app engine way, right? And in, the, in that handler, you can spawn a shell to do whatever you want. So you can use pip, a PIP, or other uh, mechanism.
to install anything. You can, yeah, you can all, yeah, you can even compile something. <laughs> <laughs> you need to add, probably add uh, devil, devil essential or something? Devil? Build essential. Ah, build essential, so, yeah. We have another question, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Is it possible to specify the VM that is built? Uh, Sorry, what? Uh, what did you say? Is it possible to specify the VM that is built with the computer engine? So I mean, pre-install some uh, package application with computer engine and specify it with, uh, from the app, app engine. So it's talking. So like VM? Our image selection is no, no, not, not there. You cannot select the image. We, yeah. Okay. But, so, it, but it's possible in the future. Okay. Uh, at this point, you cannot specify uh, different image. Yeah. Okay. S thanks. Looks like we have lots of questions for uh, Matsu Sang, and do we have any more? When are you going back to Silicon Valley? Uh, on 18th October. On, on 18th October. Okay, so you have you guys have around another month or so to ask him questions. This is the <laughs> no, it's. Yeah, it's closed. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, then let's give another last round, uh, one more round of applause for Matsuo-san.